Now, let us explore what are the main topics we have got in this particular chapter by the management. If we are to design and implement an effective internal control system. Dear students, now it is time to start the major topic number two which is called systems and controls. Now, let us explore what are the main topics we have got in this particular chapter which is the major topic number two systems and controls. So, first of all we are going to understand what are systems and controls or more commonly known as what are internal control systems. So, once we are going to understand what is internal control system, the first thing which we need to understand is what are the components of the internal control system. Then we will go on and we will try to understand how to document the client systems. If a company has got a sales system, say a purchase system, we need to understand how as an auditor we could document those systems because if we are going to document those systems we will be able to understand those systems. Then we are going to realize that in the syllabus of AA we have got six different types of internal control systems such as sales system, purchase system and so on. So we are going to explore all those six internal control systems. Last but surely not the least and I think the most important agenda, the most important part of this particular chapter systems and control is the exam requirement. So we are going to explore the exam requirement at the end of this particular chapter or at the end of this class and once we are done with the exam requirements we will head straight to the past paper questions. The main types of the internal control system in the AA syllabus. In our course, we have got overall six internal control systems starting from the very basic and the most important sales system. If you have understood sales system, you are automatically good at the purchase system which is entirely the opposite of the sales system. Then we have got payroll system, we have got inventory system, we have got bank and cash system, then we have got non-current asset system. As a student, if you could understand one system out of the six systems, if you could understand only one out of the six, you are good to go and you are good to prepare the rest of the next five systems by yourself. You only need assistance for one particular system, any one system. If any student has understood according to the guidelines and according to the instructions, one system the rest of the five systems could be prepared by the student on self-study basis. So, I will be teaching all the six systems, but you have to concentrate at least uh, on one particular system. You have to give your best shot on the first system. If you are good at the first system, you are automatically good at all the systems. Let us explore the exam requirements with respect to the internal control systems. Overall, we have got five different types of exam requirements. The first exam requirement could be list or explain three or four control objectives, let us say of the sales system, list four control objectives of the purchase system, four objectives of the bank and cash system, four objectives of the inventory system. This first requirement, this first requirement is a knowledge based requirement. So, this particular first requirement has got nothing to do with the, with the scenario of the question. So, it is a complete knowledge based requirement. Let us explore the more important and more tricky exam requirements. Once we have understood the marking scheme, now let us explore how to identify the deficiency, how to explain and all that stuff. So, let me take you to the exam technique and let us explore things. First of all, we got to understand and we got to learn how to score 0.5 mark that is how to score a weakness, a deficiency within the question within an internal control system. Let us say Mr. Ahmed receives the cash from the customer. So once I receive the cash, 
I update the cash day book and the receivable ledger control account. So I am updating the accounts or I am updating the books as well. So I received the cash, I updated the books. Now after a week or so or let's say on a daily basis, I end up depositing that cash into the bank. So I am receiving the cash, I am updating the books and I am depositing the cash into the bank. After a month or so or on a fortnightly basis, whatever the tenure is, there is a possibility that the same individual Mr. Ahmed is also performing an activity called bank reconciliation. So I am also involved in the reconciliation. So if an individual is involved in too many activities highly interrelated to each other, I believe that the principle or the control called segregation of duty is not there. Considering segregation of duty is not there or there is an evidence of weak segregation of duty, you are going to recognize this particular issue, this particular thing as a deficiency. So what about the explanation? In order to explain the deficiency, in order to make sure the client realizes that it is a deficiency, you have to have one thing in your mind. Your explanation should make sure that the client realizes it, that it is very crucial and important for them. In order to make them realize, you got to make sure that they realize that the potential deficiency will have negative issues in the future. So whatever the deficiency is, you got to explain the negative consequences the company might face in the future. Now how to write the recommendation? This is extremely important and tricky. I believe the identification of deficiency and the explanation of deficiency is not a big, is not a difficult task. But how to explain the recommendation is a tricky task. How are we going to explain the recommendation? The golden rule number one is never ever just repeat the deficiency itself. Once you are writing the recommendation, do not just repeat the deficiency. Now what do I mean by just repeat the deficiency? So there is a factory and there is no security guard outside the factory. Okay fine, there is no security guard outside the factory. I have identified this from the question and I got 0.5 mark. We need to understand what is key control. We all know a key control means a good control. A control a control, a good control on which a good control or a key control is the one on which the auditor will seek to place reliance. So if as an auditor I am going to place reliance on a particular control, it means that control is a good control or a key control. Now the last part. If you have recommended certain controls to the management. You realize few deficiencies, you explain them and you recommended certain controls. The examiner is going to ask you, how are you going to test those controls? So a test of control means as an auditor, you are going to perform certain actions. So a test of control is basically some kind of an action which is performed by the auditor.